2,000 years ago, there was an invincible demon capable of destroying people with the beat of his heart. Not even the gods could stand against this demon. His name is Anos Valdic. Because of his fame and strength, he was recognized as the king of demons. And because all his wishes came true, he also ended up being known as a tyrant. But somehow, this demon died and now, it is said that he will revive. There he was, helping a white-haired girl called Misha. When, out of nowhere, a figurehead who thinks he's strong began to flatter Anos Kun and threaten him with a flame that he said would burn even the gods. In response, Anos blew out the flame and just by telling the guy to stand still, he had to obey, because he was too weak compared to our protagonist. Then, in order to enter the Demon King's Academy, our protagonist had to pass an aptitude test, which consisted of a deadly battle against another candidate. The battle turned out to be against that extra and now he's wearing anti-magic armor so he won't obey our protagonist's lines. However, our protagonist felt offended at having to fight such a weak being, so to give him some leverage, he promised to defeat him without making a move. That said, he destroyed the extra with just the beat of his heart. Even though he was losing, the extra didn't want to give up. And to resolve this, Anos made a contract with the guy, where he had to make the extra give up the fight in order to defeat him. With the contract made, Anos Kun began to kill and revive the extra using a magic called Ngao. After that, our protagonist went for a magical assessment, and in front of him, that girl called Misha proved to have a very impressive number of magical skills. Anos, on the other hand, ended up breaking the magic crystal due to his absurd amount of mana. Finally, there were a few questions about what the candidates know about the history of the best demon king ever. Afterwards, Anos met up with Misha, who was waiting for him outside. He then took her to his house for dinner, as his family would love to meet her. And when he enters his house, we discover that the guy is only one month old. He then introduced Misha Necron to his mother, and his parents were very proud that their son already had a suitor. And after a very pleasant evening, our protagonist decided to accompany Misha home. But on the way, they ended up being approached by the demon king Leogandu, who revealed that a plebeian demon is not not accepted at the academy, and because Anos has passed he will have to be eliminated just as others have been. In response, Anos says that a true demon king doesn't have noble blood or anything like that. He just has enough power to force everyone to bow down to him. In continuing the mistake, Lieg tells everyone to use magic against Anos, but their magic fails because they're afraid of such a high-level opponent. So Lieg tries to use origin magic against Anos. However, an origin spell doesn't affect its own origin. In short, the guys can't try to use an Anos spell against themselves. Themselves. After explaining this, Anos revives the extra who had been killed by his own brother as a hate-filled zombie, and now the extra wants revenge on his brother. To put an end to his transformation into a zombie, Anos tells Lieg to call out his brother's name, remembering their family ties. However, in this era, it seems that the brothers don't have the same ties as 2,000 years ago. At the end of that night, Anos was forced to resolve the whole situation by himself, even reviving the idiot brothers. Having done so, he announced to everyone that he is the one and only true demon king king of tyranny. After that, in a flashback, we see how Anos died, basically when the hero was once again trying to kill him. Instead of killing again a hero who practically never dies, Anno, tired of this life of wars, decided to use all his power and life to create a barrier that would separate all the kingdoms, thus bringing an end to the war between all the races. This idea seemed good to the hero, so he decided to help Anos with it. After accomplishing this great feat, Anos thanked the hero Kanon for helping and promised to meet him again in the future, this time to become his friend. After that, we see Anos being born and already telling his parents his name. And back in the present day, despite having a perfect score in all the tests, our protagonist was placed in the Demon King's school as a divergent. And the mistake was this, for some reason, the name of the Demon King that everyone knows in this world is Avos Dilheep. Furthermore, according to Misha, the Demon King was someone who only cared about demons and their noble blood and that was obviously false information. So on with your studies at the school of those who can be a demon king. The professor finally arrives, introducing herself as Amelia Rudwell. She wants to separate the class into groups and needs some people as leaders to use a magic called Jais, which in this case is a magic used by a leader to increase the power of his troop. Anos applies to be a leader, but the teacher tries to tell him that a divergent cannot. In response, he says that he will prove his ability and asks her to make a pact with him using a magic called Zek. She does this and if he fails to prove his ability, he will be expelled. But that was easy for Anos. All he had to do was tell her that the circle of magic called Jais that they use is wrong, and that by using the real circle, his power increases by two. So he ends up being accepted. After that, the teacher asked the leaders to introduce themselves, and the first to do so was Sasha Necron, Misha's older sister. Then our protagonist introduced himself as the demon king of tyranny himself. After that, Sasha went to Anos to say that her sister is a magical doll, and that she shouldn't even be alive. In response, Anos said 
says that even magical dolls have souls and are alive, and this angers Sasha, so she tries to threaten Anos with her Eye of Destruction. However, her eye has no effect on it, because he also has the Eye of Destruction and his is much more powerful than hers. In the end, after feeling Sasha's power, Anos invited her to join his group, so that Sasha could be close to her sister. However, Sasha balked, saying that she didn't want to be near that doll. After school, Sasha showed up and called our protagonist to a duel, and whoever lost the duel would become completely submissive to the other. So, as Anos was in need of meat for lunch, he agreed to this contest. It was only after a week that their battle took place, and their battle turned out to be about creating castles, defending them and attacking those of their enemies. And well, while Misha took care of creating the castles, Anos used Creative Magic, the famous Barra TP, and appeared in front of the enemy's castle. As well as doing this, he hacked into their communications and said that their castle was too light. That said, he lifted the enemy's castle with a single hand and after spinning it around a lock, he threw the castle away. Then to defeat Anno, all his enemies unite and use a magic called Geograze, and the fact that they managed to use it makes Anno's praise their hard training. In response, he uses a simple fire spell, which nullifies their spell and almost kills them. In the end, our protagonist puts Sasha in his group, not only for Misha's sake, but because he also found Sasha's eyes to be the most beautiful he had ever seen in his life. After that, he took Sasha to dinner at his house and thanks to him, the two sisters ended up making up and like a good demon, our protagonist accompanied the two to their home. And before he left, Sasha thanked him for helping her make up with her sister. And because her gratitude was too great, she went over and gave Anos his first kiss on the lips. And he was pleased to have received something so important. After he left, Sasha told Misha that she and Anos are the only ones who look her in the eye. The rest of the people are afraid of being cursed. After that, Sasha apologized for calling Misha a doll, and her sister forgave her. The next day in class, Misha was asking Anos what present she could give her sister. In reply, he said that the girl would like anything she gave her. And when Sasha arrives, one of the seven elder emperors shows up to give her a lesson. Obviously everyone respects the guy, but Anno stands up and asks if the guy doesn't know him. He says no, so our protagonist puts his hand on the guy's face to read his mind. After doing this, Anno's realized that the guy really didn't have any memories about him, so he left to talk to this former servant of his after his lesson. After the lesson, the elder emperor revealed that he had remembered Anno's. In response, our proto said he had used an origin magic on him called Riva to bring back the guy's lost memories. However, the memories he got back were still about a demon king called Avos, and discovering this started Anos thinking that maybe this Avos really does exist, and because he sensed something nostalgic in Anno, the elder emperor was going to remain neutral for the time being. Afterwards, in the schoolyard, we see that Sasha's former partners are upset because Anos doesn't want anyone other than the two girls in their group. Since there was no way to talk to the guys, Sasha went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Anos and Misha, and so they set off for an exam that consists of entering a dungeon to kill monsters and collect items. And since this is Anno's castle, he decided to go in last with the girls, as he knows the whole way. Along the way, he tells Misha that he knows a place where she should find a good present for her sister. And as they are both twins turning 15, Anno's told Misha to get something for her too. So along the way, Anno's went through the secret passages using only his brute strength. There, Sasha picked up an important staff that she wanted. Misha went to get a present for her sister, which turned out to be a powerful coat as well, and Anos gave Misha a ring with the power to freeze the seven seas. And when Misha gave the present to her sister and was happy, Sasha betrayed her by sticking a knife in her sister's chest when Anos was away. Seeing this, he says that Sasha is a terrible traitor because her sister is still alive. Sasha even tries to set Anos up, but she can't fight him. Besides, the Misha she stabbed was just an illusion that Anos created when he sensed that she was planning. After being defeated, Misha asked Anos to let Sasha escape, and after he did, Misha explained that her life will end when she turns 15. In short, Misha is a piece of Sasha's soul that was separated during birth. Now, when they both reach the age of 15, they will unite and become a single, stronger being. The saddest thing is that all her life, Misha was resigned to this. However, after Anos became her friend, she began to feel more like living, and since our protagonist knows no regrets or things he can't do, he decided to make Misha's wish come true. So he went to Sasha and Misha quickly told him that she wanted to be with her before she died, and since our protagonist wanted to know if Sasha Sasha really hated his sister. Sasha promised to tell him the truth if he could perform two magic circles that she wanted to set up. He accepts the challenge, so she makes two very specific magic circles. And in response, Anos masterfully remakes these circles for her, winning the contest. However, Sasha actually wanted to use these spells to keep her sister alive. For during those 15 years, Misha never really lived, so the only solution Sasha found was to give up her life for her sister. However, for this magic to work, Misha would have to hate her, and the girl won't cooperate.
separate. In the end, Sasha asks Anos to make her disappear and for him to keep Misha alive. In response, our protagonist says he's going to change the past by making Misha Sasha's twin sister. This magic will be performed by the two of them with Anos' help. However, they must believe him to be the true demon king. Out of nowhere, Ibis Necron appears and cuts Anos in half, but our protagonist was already waiting for him. So he quickly defeats him and begins his magic to change the past. However, when he starts the magic, the god of time appears to try to stop him. He takes Ivis and returns his body back in time, completely removing his wounds, after which he gives his power to the guy to defeat Anos. With that, Ivis now has the power to manipulate time a little, and as Ivis advanced on him, Anos told the two girls to just believe that he is the true demon king and that he can fulfill any wish. As he said this, he was hit by Ivis. However, normal logic doesn't apply to Anos, so after losing his body, he revived himself. In response, Ivis completely stopped time, but Anos's mana is huge enough to allow him to move with time stop. So, while the guy was attacking, Anos kept telling the two girls to believe and have faith that he can help. At this, they finally trust and have faith that he can even change the past. With that, Anos' magic to change their past finally activates and the process begins. Once this is done, our protagonist summons his sword that destroys everything it touches and hits Ivis over the head. The guy tries to go back in time to heal himself, but the sword of destruction literally destroys even the past and future versions. So Ivis was grounded, and in the end he continued to believe that Anos wasn't his real master. However, even though he destroyed the guy, our protagonist revived him and gave him back the memories of the guy that he still has. Once this was done, Anos asked his subordinate to do more research into this demon king who had stolen his place in the hearts and minds of the demons. And after all these events, Anos asked the girls to come back with him, because he needed to get his top mark soon. In the end, he put the ring on Misha's hand and praised this world he'd created. After all, he's been having a lot of fun since he was reincarnated. We are then taken to the past and see that Anos had a very powerful swordsman who served. After defeating an aquatic woman, he asked Anos for permission to be reincarnated, and Anos promised to help him when he was reincarnated. Out of nowhere, the hero Kanon appeared and Anos' servant went to face another opponent, leaving Anos alone to deal with the hero who always revived. After these scenes, we return to the present day, where the teacher only wants to give our main characters a grade 7 because the legendary cedar they got was stolen. In response, Anos sticks his hand inside a student's body, takes the cedar and gives it to the teacher, telling her to try harder if she really wants to hurt him. After that, a student calls our protagonist to go with her to a place where she and several other girls believe he is the real demon king. So after presenting the place full of his fans, the girl asks our protagonist to allow her and her friends to join his group. He then asks the girls to show him their determination, and they agree. A while later, in an exam that involved removing swords from the ground, Ano says that there is only one sword in the world that he can't wield, and it's not Guts's sword but the sword of the hero Kano. Having said that, he draws a sword from the ground and a new transfer student also draws one. Soon after, they both defeat the evaluators. After that, the new student decided to become Ano's subordinate, but he said he would only accept it if he showed his determination in battle. And to make things even better, our protagonist sends his female fans to join the transfer student and face him together. So the next day, their battle was on. So while the girls were fighting each other, Ano's went to face the new student alone. When he got there, the guy revealed that he had given his magic power to his teammates. That's why he was only going to fight Anos. In response, Anos took a stick and said he would beat him with it. So while the girl's battle was raging, the transfer student was evolving more and more during the battle, as if his battle memories were coming back to him. And back to the girls, well Sasha and Misha had to appeal using the power of sister bonding to win. And soon after that happened, Anos' battle against the new student was getting more and more intense. And the two of them were actually enjoying themselves, as it had been a long time since either of them had had an opponent they could beat with a will. During their battle, the ground became flat and in the end, Anos won. But his piece of wood was cut by Rei, so he decided to take him on as a partner. After all, it seems that Rei is an acquaintance of Anos from 2000 years ago. After all that, Anos obviously took everyone to eat at his house. And at school, the next day, Rei and Anos were chosen to take part in a magic sword tournament. Obviously this was a chance for Anos and Rei to duel, but our protagonist was a little surprised that he had been chosen. After all, the nobles just want to see him go down. Out of the blue, Missa said that she had met the elderly emperor called Melhais, and apparently, this old man wants to see him, and even though he can't remember Anos, his origin still recognizes him as his master. That said, Melhais tells him everything he remembers. Basically, after Anos climbed the barrier dividing the world, he was sent to another land, and after only 100 years, he managed to return to the kingdom of the demons. However, when he returned, everyone only talked about this Avos guy. This Melhains recommended that Anos not take part in the magic sword tournament, so at dinner, he said he didn't want to take part, but his mother said he should and she almost 
said that his father had gone to get a magic sword for his son, and since Misha had made food for Anos the other day, he decided to thank her by making her wish come true. In response, she said she wanted to go out with him, and during her outing, she revealed that she wanted to buy a present for Sasha. That said, she took Anos to a store selling miniature castles, and according to Misha, the smaller these castles are, the more they're worth. So Anos asks her if she wants to see him make an amazing one, and she says yes. Then Anos throws down the gauntlet and creates an entire miniature city. When the store assistant saw this, she even offered her soul in exchange, but Anos said he already had a use for it. Afterwards, Misha began to thank Anos for always helping her on a stool in the square. In return, she promised to get stronger to help him. In response, Anos said that he's not perfect and that the only thing he's good at is destruction. And according to him, Misha is the opposite of him, being good at creation magic. So if she trains, she could be very useful to him in the future. That same day, Anos and Misha stopped in front of a hospital, and out of nowhere, Ray showed up to visit someone. Anos obviously offered his help if anyone needed healing, but Ray said he didn't need it, and because he felt the guy was a bit strange, Anos decided to ask Ivis to investigate him too. And the next day, before the tournament started, Ivis in cat form showed up with some information. Basically, he discovered that Ray's mother has a virtually incurable disease. As for the tournament, it seems that there are people who are really up to something with Anos, and because of the plots, Anos intended not to take part. However, when he heard his mother defending him while people were talking badly about him, and when he saw that his father had gotten him a magic sword, at that moment, he remembered that he was invincible and set off to make his family happy. During the duel, he defeats and breaks his enemy's sword, and even says that a sword made with love should not be underestimated. This makes the guy's father cry with joy, while several blacksmiths admire the sword he made. After that, Ray showed up to say that he was going to kill Anos and all. Then the two of them attacked each other and almost killed each other, and by almost holding Ray's heart, Anos realized that the guy is bound by a magical contract that can destroy his origin. Anos also believes that the guy's mother is being held hostage. After discovering this, Anos won all his battles for the day, left his magic sword with his mother because she kept asking for it, and then TP to Ray's mother. There he discovered that the woman is of the spirit race, and she is disappearing because she needs her beliefs and traditions to be followed somewhere. However, she doesn't even know what her race's beliefs and traditions are. And according to Ray's mother, he was always lonely because he was too strong. But since he met Anos, he's been happier, because now he had someone who could even defeat him. So, to make things right, Misa decided to offer Ray's mother a bit of her origin. And this will only work because Misa is a hybrid of a demon and a spirit. To do this, Anos creates a new magic from scratch and begins the process. While this was going on, Anos's mother was being attacked by the teacher, who wanted to steal Anos's magic sword. Anos's loyal followers fought bravely, using even their last strength to protect the guy's mother. And when all seemed lost, Anos appeared and using a magic called N, he healed his mother and all the girls. And after that, Anos promised never to forget those girls' names for the rest of his life. In the end, because he was so angry, Anos grabbed Professor Emilia by the neck and then killed her because she wouldn't stop talking about nobility. After that, he revived her as a hybrid woman and then he put a curse on her so that she would be a half-breed no matter what incarnation she had. Maybe then she'll understand how distorted her view of the worlds. Later that day, Ray discovered Misa trying to treat his mother, so as Misa's origin was in danger, he fainted. Soon afterwards, Ray's mother woke up and asked him to focus on being happy and not worry about her. However, Ray won't let his mother die without a fight. So the next day, the final duel between Anos and Ray is organized. However, the rule for victory is that the enemy's necklace must be broken, and Anos' necklace was sucking his magic. So during the fight, Ray says that he was told to try and delay the fight so that Anos would get weak. However, he went against Against the contract he made offering his life and decided to do everything his way, so that he and his mother would die with no regrets. Upon hearing this, Anos was excited, because this is the real Ray he knows. Then, after Anos told Ray to just fight without worrying about anything, the two began an insane battle that could not even be seen by ordinary people. The fight went back and forth, until the two decided to end it right away. Then, in a final attack, Anos lost an arm, but managed to fatally hit Ray. At that very moment, a dimensional magic was activated and Anos was sent to the prison that Melhaze had, and now, he will have to fight with half the mana he has, against three elder demons. Out of nowhere, Ray rises, simply eliminating the two elders by surprise, leaving only Melhaze to go. And the explanation for Ray being a lot, is because our protagonist broke the curse that affected his origin in the act of that final blow, so he won't die because of the contract. Not only that, but Anos healed Ray, and now it's two against one. However, Melhaze tries to use Ray's mother as a hostage. In response, Anos attacks him and Ray manages to get to where his mother was. Now Anos is left alone to have a one-on-one -on -one against Melhaze. So, using our protagonist's own magic, the old magician began to attack Anos, and he also used some of the barrier magic that Anos 
used to divide the world against our protagonist. But even so, the old man couldn't defeat Anos, so he hid in a barrier and tried to attack Ray. However, even though the guy was in another dimension, Anos managed to defend him. Then, while protecting Ray, Anos made an anti-magic sword so he could defend himself and his mother. However, his sword breaks and Anos is forced to defend him again. In the end, as the situation was difficult, Ray's mother said she would help her son with her spirit magic. And even though this could lead to her death, the woman went ahead and transformed herself into a sword for Ray to use. He uses the sword and shows his mother his abilities, even managing to hit Melhaze inside his defense. However, after he does this, his mother disintegrates in front of him. At this, the old man's barrier was broken, so Anos infiltrated it to defeat him. In response, the old man trapped him with Anos' own barrier and magic. However, after being pressured, our protagonist ended up awakening another part of his power that had not yet returned since he was reincarnated, so he first cut off the legs of the old man who wanted to retreat, and when he tried to fight back, our protagonist hit him in the middle of the head, hitting a small being that was controlling his mind. What's more, he also freed the other two demons from the control of Grandfather Delhebi. At that moment, Avos himself appeared watching Anos. In the end, our protagonist declares to everyone that he won thanks to his father's love in building this sword. What's more, he cured Rei and then used Ngal to revive the guy's mother, and this was only possible thanks to his words about there being something other than magic in this world that gives people strength, which in this case is love. And Anos realized that this was the legend about the woman the moment he won his first battle and dedicated his father's sword to her. In short, once again our protagonist did the impossible for the sake of his friends. Afterwards, Anos received the glory of victory through Sasha and told Misha that this tournament was quite interesting. So we go back in time and see that, many years ago, Anos, tired of fighting, went to the human kingdom to call the hero Kanon for a chat. At the time, he was attacked by a human who, using the power of other humans, tried to eliminate Anos, but the guy failed miserably and was almost killed. And at the guy's request, Hero Kanon went to Anos to defeat him. After that, a new teacher announces to all the students of the Demon King's Academy that they are going to do an exchange at the Human Kingdom's Hero Academy. Of all the people there, not one demon knew what a hero was. Upon discovering this, Anos decided to train his group partners because they were still too weak. He helps each one personally to evolve by giving them tips. And after all that, he gives them a special sword that can cut things according to the user's will. And to get to the Academy of Heroes, the students will have to make a long 10-day trek. However, Anos teleports them directly there using his creative mode. So while the guys want to do a few things, Anos decides to investigate this so-called Hero Academy. There he is happy to see that the place is truly peaceful. And during a walk with Sasha, Anos makes the girl promise that if something happens that his eyes can't reach, she'll use her beautiful eyes to help. And she agreed to do that, as long as he doesn't treat her like a child anymore. After that, they went to the door of the Heroes Academy and Anos opened the door. Out of nowhere, a girl appeared saying that they weren't allowed there, but Anos said that they had come from Dilhae. Then the girl introduced herself as Eliana and said she was a third-year student at the Academy of Heroes. And since Anos wanted to learn about the great hero, Eliana took the two of them to learn more about the history of the Academy. Following the tour with Eliana, she tells them that a long time ago, the hero defeated the Demon King and created the barriers that protect humanity. When she hears this, Sasha gets angry because it's a lot, but Anos calms her down, saying that this version must have spread to make humanity more comfortable by protecting with a supposed barrier from the great hero. And continuing with his questions, Anos discovers that in human lands, the Demon King's name is also Avos. And when Anos asks about the hero's reincarnation, Eliana tells him that his seven origins have been reincarnated in different bodies. And currently, the students with the origins are studying in a special class. Out of nowhere, two of these guys show up and according to the year, they are not the reincarnation of the great hero. Because the guy has seven origins compacted into one. One of these guys gets angry when he hears this and tries to attack Anos. But with just the blink of an eye, he sends the guy flying away. After that, Anos leaves the school and as he's leaving, Eliana tells him that the hero was murdered 2,000 years ago, and that if Anos is still looking for him, he won't find him, because the hero is gone. Then she said something that the guys cut out of the edit, just to make us keep watching. And after 10 days, the other students from the Demon King's Academy arrived at the Hero's Academy, and inside the Hero's Academy, the third-year student from the Demon Academy went up to Anos to ask him if he hadn't cheated when he came to the Hero's Academy. In response, Anos praised the guy for arriving in two days. In the end, this guy said that he didn't recognize Anos as the true Demon King and that he didn't like him saying. After that, with the demons and heroes gathered, both of the best third-year students were put up to show off their magic. In response, the guy from the Heroes Academy created and amplified a sword, and the demon, when it was time to show off his power, went to perform a transformation spell, but for some reason he couldn't activate. Seeing this, Anos said that the humans had made a barrier around the animal to prevent demon magic. However, if a magic greater than the barrier is cast, it overcomes 
the protection. So he turns the hamster into a hideous monster. And then everyone starts discussing whether or not Anos is the real demon king. After that, while Ibis was giving Anos some information, the girls showed up and asked him to go for a walk. And there at the human fair, they found Rei with Masei. So as not to disturb their love, they just watched from afar. After that, everyone was talking about the present Misa had received. And according to Anos, this gift is related to something that couples used to do when they were going to split up. But apparently nowadays it's given as a sign of love and unit. After this conversation, another dispute began. This time Anos wanted to take part, but Rivist insisted on representing the demons and promised not to lose. They went, but they were beaten again, because the humans filled the seawater with holy water, and that not only made the heroes snort, but also made the demons weak. To make matters worse, Rivist's towel has been hit by a stigma magic that doesn't allow him to heal. Seeing this, Anos goes to heal him, but he refuses. However, on seeing his teacher cry, the guy ends up allowing Anos to heal. After that, Anos decided to take part in a second round, and when he complained about the holy water, the heroes told him to dry up the lake. In response, the guy actually dried up the entire lake using a giant fireball, so the heroes set off for the new battle arena, believing they could beat Anos using their fake hero powers. The enemies now believe that Anos really is the demon king. However, as they hear a voice telling them to kill the demons in their heads, they firmly believe that they are the reincarnation of the great hero canon, so they start the battle by erecting a barrier and Anos attacks it. However, an unknown girl is able to destroy Anos' flames. Nisha then has the idea of creating protective castles inside their barrier, and Anos agrees to protect her while she does this. That said, he taps into the enemy's barrier, and a fight breaks out while Nisha goes about creating the castle. To stop Anos, the guys team up to bind him with chains that add up to a total of 1088 anti-demon seats. However, Anos managed to defeat them just by expanding his magic, and the only reason the guys didn't die was because their barrier protects and heals him. The one who seems to be the strongest is a little girl with lifeless eyes. And after the first blow from the years, his companions arrive with everything, forcing the enemies to participate in several one versus one. The first to fight was Sasha and she easily defeated the first enemy. Ray, on the other hand, not only collected the enemy's sacred swords, but also went and used them to create a stigma on the enemy. In order to defeat Anos, the two enemies who had been playing hard to get decided to use the support of the entire human population to give them power. And now with everything at peace, there are more than one million humans in this city, and that really made the two of them quite strong. However, with the support of only eight girls, Anos was able to receive more power than the two heroes. So while the eight girls were singing, Anos was beating the crap out of them. In addition, Anos said that 2,000 years ago, the feelings towards the hero canon were much stronger than those of humans now. Out of nowhere, everyone began to hear a voice of pure hate telling the demons to be killed. And before Anos could investigate what it was, the enemy heroine went after him, blowing up her own origin to take him with her. This obviously doesn't work, but for some reason she keeps appearing over and over again and blowing herself up. Annoying. Anos holds the girl's own origin before she blows herself up. As he does so, he hears Eliana herself asking him to go to the temple to put an end to the matter of the girl blowing up her own origin. He tells Misha to go there. However, when she gets there, she is attacked several times by the instructor of the Heroes Academy. So before she could die, Anos.tp went there and defeated the guy and then healed Misha. Once that's done, he kills the Heroes instructor and revives him, asking for his object. In response, the guy tells the demon to fuck off. Then Anos uses a magic that reveals a person's true soul. And in his case, the guy is a real monster. Then, as the guy still intended to fight, Anos removed the guy's origin and told him that neither he nor those students were the hero canon, because the real hero had several origins and even if one of them was destroyed, he always came back. In short, the hero was a guy who fought and lost several times, but he never gave up, even though it was very painful for him. After doing this, Anos went to Ileana and there the girl told him that she wasn't human but a magician. Then, after freeing Ileana, she was able to cancel the mass explosion that everyone was about to commit because of a manipulation magic that had been activated inside the human berry. And going back to Ileana, she basically said that she and another magic called Asak were created using the origin of one commander Jirga. This guy hated demons more than any, so he kept his will alive in these magics. However, the buff magic he created called Asak absorbed all of his will. So when the human heroes got booed, they were filled with hate. Ileana, on the other hand, was no longer hated by the demons, but she continued to be used to create clones of herself that blew themselves up. In the end, she asked Anos to destroy her because she couldn't live like that any longer. However, the children she created asked for their mother to stay alive, and Anos promises to fulfill their wish. Out of nowhere, that guy he just killed appears and it turns out he's also a clone who keeps being created over and over again. And continuing with the sudden appearances, Avos appears out of nowhere with the three demon emperors that our protagonist had not yet corrected his mind. He takes the sword formerly used by the great hero and promises to act to correct the world. That said, the guy disappears, and then he announces to all the demons that he has
has come back to life and that now he is going to wipe out the humans. Because even after 2000 years they haven't changed. To avoid this conf, Anos meets with his emperors who have already had their minds repaired. And in addition to the emperors, Sasha and Misha also want to help him. Before going to fight, Ray went to make out with Misse. But he stopped before and just took his share of the necklace and promised to return to her. After that, our protagonist told everyone that their goal was to stop both sides of the war without killing anyone. So Misha and Sasha stayed to stop a bunch of demon souls. Ray and Misa stayed near the border to stop the demons getting through. The emperors on Anno's side, meanwhile, were in charge of stopping the emperors on Avo's side. All this while Anno's dealt with the boss. And when Anno's got close to where the enemy was supposed to be, he received a message from Misa saying that Ray was missing. And on receiving that message, Anno's finally found Avo's. And after the first exchange of blows with Avo, Anno's soon sensed that the guy in front of him is the hero Kanon, who is actually also Ray. Then in front of Anno's, the hero Kanon revealed that even after what Anno's had done for the peace of the world, the Jirga still wanted to kill him after he was reincarnated. So Kanon used his sword to cut off Anno's destiny to revive as the adored demon king and with the passage of time, the name Avo's became the name of the true demon king. And now, the hero's plan was to die as the demon king. And in doing so, the hate magic of the man who killed him would end, and peace would reign once again. And since Anno's has already done his part by sacrificing himself, the hero wants him to just watch the goodness of the human in front of him. However, since Anno's is a tyrant, he only wants to do what he wants, and his current desire is to stop Kanon's plan. That's why he started fighting the guy by destroying his origins one by one. And when only a single origin was left, the hero decided to use two swords. Then Anno's let himself be hit. In the end, he changed Kanon's clothes and his own, so that everyone could see the result of the battle, as if the demon king himself had been killed. And while he was hit, Anno's told all the demons to wait until he came back to life, so that they could seek revenge, and until that happened, he wouldn't allow them to retaliate. So Anno's dies being the hero who saved Kanon's life. After his death, the hero Kanon said that the war was over and that the humans should retreat. However, the magic of rage against the demons was activated on a large scale, causing all humans to seek revenge against the demons. In response, Kanon tries to eliminate the magic that Jirga has created, but he can't destroy sacred magic with a sacred sword. To give the battle a boost, the two sisters use the Necron family's final technique to unite their origins and become one person. In response, Jirga tries to make Eleanor's clones explode. At this, everyone begins to work hard to stop, and when all seemed lost and everyone would be blown up by Eleanor's more than 10,000 cops. Anno simply came back to life, using a magic that makes him come back to life after dying from a blow he's received before. Obviously a magic he created himself. In response, Jirga manipulates the humans to the maximum to reach a level of power that can go against Anus. His first attack, Kanon stops, but the guy manages to send Kanon away and then hits Anus. Then, because he doesn't have much magic left after being revived, our protagonist asks his union of fans to sing and dance on his behalf. And during their show, the Jirga Jirga tried to attack the army of demons and Eleanor began to make an effort to protect him. And at that moment, all the soldiers looked up at Anno's in the sky and finally understood that he is the true demon king. So they began to hand over all their power to him. In the end, to the music of Anno's fans, our protagonist and the hero Kanon defeated Jirga together because he is the source of all human hatred. And by dying, the Jirga was able to see his family again, who had long ago been killed by demons. After that, Sasha and Misha went to get Anno's, but he still has things to do, like turning Eleanor into his magic so that she can never be misused by anyone again. He also took responsibility for her 10,000 cops. And after all that, he returned all the demons back to the city. And the anime ended with him taking Eliana to his house, where again his mother and father thought he had gotten another woman. And with this one, it seems he already has 10,000 children.